Live? Yes, sir. All right. We have a really good crowd here today. <laughs> Thank you for coming. We're going to let it build up. People logging on there, E? Um, not yet, but it says that you have a lot of active followers. Oh, someone joined. There we go. People are joining. Yay, the people are coming. <laughs> well, we start this thing sharp at 11, so we got just another minute to go. We're here in the pit stop gift shop today. We have some new gear available. Hang on. Check those guys out. That's cool. Got these new beanies, or I was told they're called toques. <laughs> it's part of working in a museum. You have people from all over the place come here, and you, you learn words you didn't know before. A toque. I call it a beanie. All right, well, greetings and welcome, everyone. My name is Richard Vining. I'm the director here at the Edge Motor Museum. Uh, thanks for stopping by. We have a live unveiling today, and so uh, thanks for being a part of it. We've got a great crowd here at the museum as well. Uh, it's our Cars and Coffee Day. And so the second Saturday of each month, we do cars and coffee. That's happening here today. So have a good crowd here for this, and we're going to unveil a fantastic new car uh, here today for the American Speed Exhibit. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, we're open today until 3, so you can come see this car in person if you would like, or tomorrow, 12 to 4, and then our normal hours, Monday through Friday, 1030 to 5. And so come see it and become a member. Uh, there's over a hundred of you now that are members of this museum. We're really proud of that. At the end of the year, we go hundred members. That's awesome. So thank you so much for uh, uh, joining and being a member. If you're not a member, join. This place needs your help, needs your support. It's a wonderful thing here in Memphis, and uh, I really hope that you can join us uh, and continue to support this car culture we have going on here in Memphis. Uh, we start today with the greatest picture on the internet. This is our guest book. <laughs> right here, and uh, I wanted to go through a couple of the things that when you come to the museum, buy a ticket, people go through, and then they come and they fill out a page on the guest book. I flagged a few of my favorites here, and I'm just going to read them for you, Elaine. Let's see. You know, this one is from Michael. He lives in Dallas, uh, uh, and this is something that happens a lot. You know, the first thing he said, what's your favorite car? He said the GT500. Acceptable answer. Uh, and then we asked three questions. What was your first car? What's the car you wish you still had? And what's the worst car you ever owned? First car, car you wish you still had, worst car you ever owned. Well, in a lot of cases, it's the same answer for all three. Here is a 93 Honda Del Sol, and he wrote it down three times. That's what nostalgia does. And it's a lot of fun to see when people are approached with that, they'll write down the same thing three times. Uh, here's another one. This is from Amir. I'm not going to try your last name, Amir. I do remember you coming by here. Uh, he's from Iran. And so his favorite car was a Citroen Xantia. Never heard of it. Uh, car he wish he still had, Mercedes Benz SL450. Not bad. Uh, and then why I highlighted this is what's the worst car you ever owned? And this is not me seeing this. This is Amir. He said, All French cars are garbage. There you have it. <laughs> Let's see. All right, I highlighted this one. This is from Riley in Houston, Texas. He put down 1968 Dodge Hemi Superstock, one of my favorite cars that we've had here. It's no longer here. He, he wrote, the reason why I like it is because it's impractical and barely legal. That it was. But I brought this up because, not this Saturday, next Saturday the 15th, that car is at Kissimmee at a Mecham auction. And so tune in Saturday night and you will see Mecham Kissimmee uh, you'll see that car roll across the block, and let's see if it gets half a million dollars. It ought to be fantastic, but it was right here for about four months at the Edge Motor Museum. All right, let's see here. Uh, Hank Cummings from Easton, Pennsylvania. Uh, the worst car he ever owned, he said it was a 69 Mustang Fastback. He guess it had a pretty paint job, but it was a rust bucket. I highlighted that because uh, Hank, part of the reason it was a rust bucket is because you live in Easton, Pennsylvania. Those probably connect at some point. Uh, and then one of my favorite ones, Lily P. She's from southern Louisiana and she was not old enough to write herself, so her mother wrote it down for her. Her favorite car is a Shelby GT500, get that. Uh, but it says, what was your first car? And she wrote a little tykes pink car. <laughs> Car you wish you still had. 
her Barbie Jeep. <laughs> and the worst car you ever owned, she goes, it was a bike that broke. I thought that was fantastic. As the father of three daughters, I, I particularly like the Barbie Jeep answer. Uh, and then her little brother, or big brother, and he could write his own answers, he wrote, Little Tyke's Black Pickup, the car you wish you, the car you wish you had, he wrote Bulldozer. There we go, Dax, I like that answer. <laughs> so this is our guest book. It's a lot of fun. Thanks for everybody who participates in it. And uh, also, it's fun to thumb through uh, if you ever come to the museum. So it's after 11. People have built up. Let's go down here and check out this brand new car. Um, the reason why I wanted to start with the guest book today is because the car we're going to unveil is a personal favorite of mine. Um, I have wanted this car on display in this museum before this museum existed. Um, it was one of the cars I had in my mind ahead of time going, I, one day we will get this car. Today is that day. And so I'm super excited about it. Come on. Hello. Oh, here it comes. Here we go. Here's the story of American speed. Uh, we break it down into five categories. Fueling up, ignition, full speed ahead, sharp turn, and then the sad part, the end of the road. Today we're going to stop under this section here, ignition. It runs from 53 to 57. And we're going to particularly highlight a section down here called Gone But Not Forgotten, but don't look at it because if, you know, if you've ever watched this broadcast before, what you know is we're giving clues right now. Today's car comes from this era here. Now, in Gone But Not Forgotten, we like to highlight certain cars that are no longer around. Uh, here in America, Corvette is known as the sports car, right? But Corvette wasn't always you know, America's first sports car. There were a lot of companies out there trying their hands at replicating the continental roadster here on American soil. Drove it home in Nashville and drove the Cars like Crosley, remember the number 19 hot shot we have in the back? A Cunningham, a Nash Healy, or this Glasper G2, favorite. Uh, they just didn't have the backing of a Chrysler, a GM, or a Ford, uh, and so they didn't uh, uh, completely make it as an automaker, but they did leave their mark and they helped shape what the American auto sports car is. As is your practice, we have a lot of really good guesses this, this, this go around. We had over 70 entrants come in. Uh, here are the correct answers. Uh, but I do like to point out some of the, sometimes it's more fun to see, what were the incorrect answers uh, uh, that people threw into the jar? Uh, something that the, the, the docents here and, and myself participated in is a little bit of misdirection. Today happens to be whose birthday? Elvis's. Today is Elvis's birthday. We would always mention that before people fill it. That was a little bit of a misdirection on our part. Uh, and so as a result, we got some really cool answers that may have had an Elvis connection, but a couple were pretty good. 1973 Stutz Blackhawk. That was one of the answers that I really appreciated. I can kind of see that under here. It's missing the side pipes and most notably the roof, but that's a good answer. Uh, another one, 1960 MGA 1600. Anybody know where that's from? Blue Hawaii, another Elvis movie. Uh, no, it's not, it's not that either. Uh, so they're good answers, but I can see what you're thinking. Uh, uh, and so I appreciate uh, uh, folks giving that a good guess. Um, but come on up front here. Some other answers we got is, you, know, you see there's something going on here, right? That nose. Uh, we had an Edsel, it's not an Edsel. It needs to be twice as big and twice as heavy to be an Edsel. But we had a lot of Studebaker guesses on this as well. I can see that, but once again, it's a convertible, so that doesn't work. Uh, coming to the back, and I'm going to tell you this is probably our most prominent guess, you see these curves right here. And we had a lot of, hey, that's an AC Cobra. Okay, I get that, but that just doesn't fit with the front, particularly that nose. Uh, also, with that nose, one of the guesses we got was 
uh, 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 Aston Martin DB5, incorrect. Also doesn't say American Speed, but if any of you happen to have one, bring it on by. We'll, we'll, we'll weave it into the uh, we'll weave it into the story somehow. Uh, let's see here. We also had several Jaguar guesses and things like that. Bob, Paul, let's uncover this beautiful car. And Elaine, they're going to come from the back forward. So you just get the widest angle you can. This example comes to us from Carriage House Motor Cars in Greenwich, Connecticut. They were very cooperative, uh, so thank you very much for the help there. And it's one of only 435 examples ever built. Uh, the 161 is obviously powered by 161 cubic inch six cylinder Willys, Willis Hurricane F head that makes about 90 horsepower. Uh, the lacquer paint, and yes, that is lacquer paint, uh, is named Red Sail. And it's finished with this beautiful white interior. Lane, come on up and take a good look at this white interior. Uh, a pretty rare combination for this car. Uh, this car was built by Kaiser, but designed by a gentleman named Dutch Darren. And Elaine, one of my favorite things about this is, see, it says Kaiser Darren back here. But these logos, zoom in on that guy right there. Uh, you can see he's got the flag of the Netherlands on there. That's for Dutch Darren. But the funny thing about that is that Dutch Darren isn't Dutch. He just kind of went by that because he thought it was fancy. Uh, also, Elaine, you see he's got a green flag here to start the race. He's got a checkered flag there to finish the race. He was trying to kind of get up some sort of uh, racing heritage for this car. Uh, and then it has a convertible top. It's a, it's a lot like a T-bird is what Paul was saying. But it's called a three-way top. Uh, this is way one down. Way two, as you'd expect, you completely cover the car and you have some side curtains and things like that. But way three is kind of cool. It's called Landau, and it's where it's half up, just the back part, and then the flap kind of snaps up underneath it. And what that does is if you go down the road, it keeps the, the, the wind from blowing on you, and it uh, gives you a little more functionality when it's cold out there. So, uh, come on up to the front here, Lane. It's got these beautiful wire, wire wheels, which I believe also were available on a Studebaker. It just has the, the logo on there. But you can tell there was a lot of design involved in this car. You see this grill shape right here? Okay. It's replicated in the parking lanterns there. It would have been really easy to just throw some, some round lights on that, but no. He went all the way and did that and had those made. Um, also, you couldn't get enough air through the grill of this to cool the car. And so it has this chin looking thing down here. Now, the last thing this car needs is, is downforce on a chin, <laughs> but that is what takes air in. And so I would encourage you to look and you can see where it would scoop that air in like an air grabber would and then cools the engine up underneath that way. Uh, and then one thing, I believe, Cindy, you're the one who gave me this up here, particularly in red. The car looks like it's puckering up to give you a kiss. So beautiful. Uh, and these are the kind of things you can do uh, when it's fiberglass. But the real star of this car is this. It's a feature that is available only on this car. And has never happened before and never happened since. And since this was a one-year car, it's the only time this has ever been available. Check this out. Ooh. <laughs> the pocket door, right? How about that? Uh, there's a reason why we don't do that. It is a little difficult to get in and out of the car, but it is absolutely fabulous, and both of these doors slide wonderfully. So, with that, I'm going to turn on the spinner. Here we go. The Kaiser Aaron 161. Now, I said it was a one-year car. Why was it a one-year car? Well, there's a lot of interesting history here. For starters, Brand new, this car was $3,668. Uh, for some perspective, that Corvette over there was $3,072. The glass grip park next to was $2,950 or $750 if you bought the, bought the kit. And so the idea was they wanted to sell a thousand of these units a year. Uh, but like the Corvette, sales were really, really lagging. So uh, 
there was a backlog of these cars, and they ended up being out in the lot at the factory, and then in Toledo, that's where the factory was, there was a huge snowstorm, and it completely buried all these cars for months. Not great. Uh, at that point, Kaiser kind of had enough. Darren tried to save them by buying some of them, and the car just sort of went away from that point. But of those 435 that did make it out into the wild, this is example number 32. And as I was saying earlier when we were doing the intro online, I'm excited about this car because this is a car I wanted in this museum before this museum was even open. I just think it embodies everything that was the American sports car when we were still figuring out what is it that we really want in this country. You see how fastly they, or how fast they evolved from Basically, they were European-looking roadsters up until these 1960s monster machines. Uh, we were still figuring out what is it that we want here in America as a sports car. So, I hope you enjoy it. Come down here, take a look at it, take all the pictures you want. Thank you for supporting this museum. Again, we exist on tickets and gift sales and all that sort of stuff, but what we really need are members. Please become a member. Ask Stuart up at the front. We've got forms at the desk or right there. We need members to join this museum. We have over 100 of us right now, and I know a lot of you are here today. So thank you very much for coming, and that's all. Oh, I forgot something. I can't believe it. Are we still on? Yes. All right, we're here. we got to announce the contest winners. All right, these are people who filled out forms that got the right answer. Uh, let's see, right here, my son visited the museum. If you'd like to guess, he did this. His name is Carter Shell. Let's see, Marion Welsh, Daniel Algy, Malcolm Walker, Evan Gentry, Juan Del Rosa, and Christy Gibson. And then there's one more surprise. Someone wanted to be sure that their vote got seen, and so they, they folded it into one of these little boats. And I can see that it says Kaiser Darren 1954, but I don't know who it is. So we're just going to find this out together right now and bust up this beautiful little boat. I hope. It's been a while since I was in middle school. There it goes. Lily Aubenauer. Lily, come down here. Y'all come to the pit stop if I said your name. Pick out a hat, a shirt, or anything like that out of the gift shop, and we're just appreciative for you coming down here and having a good time uh, guessing what this was. Thank y'all very much. Uh, I'll see you again at the next one. All right, now somebody in here came